OK class debuted in 2008 with a small crossover body and promotion in Sex and the City movie. So not something that was exactly endearing to enthusiasts. But in 2013, Mercedes-Benz reworked the V6 engine to make it more efficient and smoother and it now produces 302 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. Also, these 20-inch AMG wheels and nice brown paint are starting to appeal to us. So we thought, why not take a 2014 GOK 350 and spend the day with some friends to see how we like it. Let's check it out. You are? Yo. What's up, man? Not much. How are you? Pretty good. Good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us. No today. problem, man. This is Jeff Kudnick. He runs everything over at foodbeast.com. Well, not everything. We'll say content director. <laughs> also, Instagram MVP, player of the year. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, man. No problem, really man. appreciate it. Um, food Beast is taking off right now. You guys are doing fantastic stuff covering the world of food, what's yeah. new in restaurants, all kinds of stuff. Uh, what's what's, uh, what's the, the main goal for you guys right now? Um, I think the main goal is really just to be like a millennial food publication. So I think when we started, well, there's a lot of stuff that wasn't being talked about on the web that we thought. And so that's everything from Oreos to Carl's Jr. Um, the things that we were excited about, uh, like food trucks and gourmet food courts, which we're about to go to, right? So I think anything that like, is interesting to the millennial related to food, we want to be there and talk about it. So that's kind of like at least the goal for right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but let me show you around a car a little okay, bit. Okay, let's do it. This is an interesting one too because it's kind of the entry, um, okay. uh, you know, offering to get, you know, successful creatives such as ourselves right, right, into right, Mercedes right. instead of like an $80,000 car. Um, so this one starts out at actually 39 grand, okay. which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but you like those wheels? Yeah, I like them. Okay, two grand. Is that grand. standard? Two grand. Okay. Okay. You like the brown paint? Upgrade. Eight hundred dollars. <laughs> and you know it goes on from there, but uh, essentially it's it's a good way to get people interested in in uh, you know uh, more affordable offerings. Sure. And um, I think I think uh, you'll find that it's they've done a pretty good job of it. Cool. So let's check it out, and then let's go eat because I'm starving, man. Yeah, let's try it. All right. Let's go. The point of the GOK is to right. get people in it an affordable car, but it also feels special and uh, like a luxury car. Um, some of the ways I've done this is a nice leather steering wheel with uh, paddle shifters on the back. Uh -huh. um, everything in here is standard, by the way. None of these are options that okay. we were talking about earlier. Um, these big, giant aviation vents, um, this big silver dash that lines through it, um, and, and it's pretty much soft touch materials everywhere you look. Um, how is that coming off to you? What is what is anything, anything striking you or jumping out at you once you're just being inside? The way I felt when I immediately sat in the car, as well as the general aesthetics, I think I immediately felt like I was in a luxury vehicle. And that's also, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of bias, and I already think Mercedes-Benz is a luxury vehicle. Right. So when I see a Mercedes-Benz show up, like. I'm kind of in the luxury mindset already, but it was kind of instantly confirmed like as soon as I like dropped in and felt like a plush leather seat. You right. Know? Yeah, it's actually a fake leather, but oh, fake they leather. do a good job. Well, they? then they got me. <laughs> <laughs> but those are some of the ways that uh, they're able to keep it down and be affordable, like you were talking about. Jeff has brought us to the Packing House, an open food market in Anaheim. Uh, why'd you pick this place today? Well, I picked it because it's one that's like brand new. So I wanted to show you guys some things that are definitely half like uh, new happenings in the area. And this is really like the most contemporary example, at least that I know of in Southern California, that's more toward like a gourmet food court. And so you're not gonna walk in seeing a bunch of chains or a bunch of fast food restaurants. You're gonna walk in and you know, the price points will typically be higher, but it's also typically gonna be more craft, more artisan, etc. I think you'll definitely like see the words like hipster market being thrown at stuff like this, because it's definitely towards, you know, a millennial generation that has money to spend, but at the same time they want to be craft and artisan and all that stuff. So typically when you also hear words like hipster, you also get words like creative and delicious. Sure. <laughs> so sure. I'm starving. Let's go let's, check it out. Let's go eat. Jeff has picked out an array of amazing things for us to eat for lunch today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what we've got here? Yeah, so uh, the sandwich is here and this poutine is from this place called The Croft. This is actually a chicken pot pie poutine. Really excited about that. Um, a fried chicken and short rib sandwiches. So we also have these Indian uh, sloppy joes um, from a place around here. So 
um, whether it's chicken or, or beef, or actually I have a veggie one, um, making kind of their version of Sloppy Joes, and I think Sloppy Joes are actually gonna make a comeback in the next like year or two, um, but like artisan style. So it's like on your reporter. Right <laughs> I told, I'm I told. here, the streets are telling me Sloppy Joes are coming back. And then uh, over here we have um, a grilled cheese spot uh, called Black Sheep. They did a strawberry cheesecake-esque dessert grilled cheese. And I think we're going to see more fusion in the, the dessert and savory side in the next couple of years. And then that's kind of a, a Manchego Spanish style uh, grilled cheese as well. Cool. So that's pretty much everything. Let's get started. Dang. All right, you have the fried chicken from Croft. I do, and I took way too big of a bite <laughs> to be on camera. But um, it's a, they have a nice slaw, like mint slaw on top of it, it's subtle. Uh, chicken breast is really good, it's pretty thick, kind of like lightly battered, not overly fried, so that's kind of like right up my alley. How's that? This is lamb, right? Yeah, this is the lamb sloppy joe. It's not as like outlandish as I thought it would be, it's just really good, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is cool. And this is a really very cool twist on, on something very familiar. Okay, one of the ones I'm most excited about is this chicken pot pie poutine, so uh, let's dive right into that. Yeah. I'm excited about it. These are thick fries too, they're not like floppy in and out fries. Like yeah, a bit more of a steak cut. And then for, for those that may not be super familiar with poutine, poutine is a traditional Canadian dish. You pour gravy and cheese curd over french fries, and it's actually really popular there. Traditional Canadian dish. Right. It's, it's french fries and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also becoming more popular here. And chicken pot pie as well, is there's a lot of places trying to do a twist on more southern comfort food, but adding a California flair to it. And something we just covered in Las Vegas actually was there was a restaurant who did chicken pot pie nuggets where they, they'd make the, the soup and the gravy and they'd actually uh, freeze it, then panko fry it so you could actually do like chicken pot pie nuggets um, as an appetizer. And so the fact that I'm seeing chicken, pie, chicken pot pie poutine isn't that surprising, but it also makes so much sense. That's pretty wild, man. So now that we're back in the car and I'm totally stuffed off of dessert grilled cheeses, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna tell you what that uh, place left me with the, the impression of, and that is the food actually reminded me a lot of the Benz. Okay. Stick with me. Okay. Stick with me. And it's because you take something that you expect might be more costly okay. than it would be and kind of pare it down, make it simple, take something with a lot of ingredients uh, or, or specialty ingredients and make it available to a lot of people at an affordable price. Sure. Which in a sense is what Mercedes is doing here. And, but more than that, one of the, I'm gonna play off a phrase that you guys like to use at Foopies, and that is that the Mercedes GLK gives zero <laughs> What do you think about it? It's, it's supposed to be a giant G-Wagon mishmashed into a very small C-Class sedan right. powertrain and chassis. And frankly, it shouldn't work. Right. But it does work, just like a dessert grilled cheese. <laughs> No, and I can see that making sense too because like if I was at a sit-down restaurant with like white tablecloths and then I ordered an $18 dessert grilled cheese, no matter how good that grilled cheese was, I would probably hate it. <laughs> and so like, but because it's like in a really casual to be like setting, the bangs of grilled cheese. and like sure, I mean, I know that I could make a grilled cheese at home using Kraft American Singles for literally 50 cents, but w am I willing to pay seven or eight, nine, ten bucks for like something delicious that I've never had before? Absolutely, and I can right. actually, I didn't know where you were going with that, but I can actually like, I'm on your wavelength, I, 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 can, I can see that. I, I definitely didn't think you were going to pull that off, though. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us today. Definitely had a lot of fun. Jeff, thanks so much for coming out, man. Anytime, man. Really appreciate it. Um, foodbeast.com for all your food-related needs. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Tamalin for automedia.com. Until next time, drive something awesome.